Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos, Making Music with Melodyne. And today we are discussing inconsistencies in tone and pitch when working with vocals. So it doesn't really matter if you're trying to just lightly tighten up the performance of a younger inexperienced singer, or going for full-blown modern pop with inhuman levels of consistency. There is no wrong way to do this, just some tools I'm going to show you to help you get the sounds that you're looking for. Everything we're doing today can be done in Melodyne Assistant. However, there's one tip at the end that requires the sound editor, and that's only in Melodyne Studio. All right, so let's jump in and take a look right here. This is a song called Watching the News by the Love Shakers. And the vocal I've got here is uh, some long, consistent oohs done in the background vocal. Let's pan to the right side. And this is a pretty good singer here to begin with. So you're really only going to hear these subtle results in headphones or with studio monitors. But let me show you a quick before and after. Now, pay close attention to the consistency in pitch and in tone of those oohs on the right-hand side. Here's our original. When I woke up this morning I was watching the news, yeah. Okay, and let's uh, take a look at what we can end up with at the end. When I woke up this morning So much more consistent, so much more intentional. So let me show you how I got there. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do might come as a little bit of surprise, but because we're dealing with such long, sustained notes right here and lots of little inconsistencies in there, I'm gonna break these notes into more pieces. Now, Melodyne has already broken them into where it thinks they're different notes, but I kinda wanna maximize those breakage points to be able to nudge everything a little closer to home. Now you can do this by hand with the separation tool, but what I'm gonna do is go into the note assignment mode, which is our wrench right here. And inside there, we can come to the separation tool. And now what we get are these sliders at the top, right? Now these sliders uh, represent the number of separations. The right-hand side right here is potential separations. So you can see as I grab that and move that over, we see all these little triangles start to show up. Those are potential separations. These right here are actual separations. So I'm gonna maximize this and we'll see all of these additional places that might be good places to separate. So what you can do now is just sort of highlight this area and then right click and come to re-separate notes at starting point lines. This will make breakpoints at all of those points right there. If you're doing the whole song, this may take a few seconds because it's reanalyzing everything. All right, great. Now. I still want to go in and look for some places more where I may want to add some more separations before we do anything else. And I see a perfect example right here. Right, let's zoom in and take a look at this right here. Looking at the end, I can tell that this is a vibrato type passage and I want control over that. So I really want to split that out into the up and down motion. So I'll probably add another separation right around here for where it swings up. And then over here, I'll probably add another separation here and then slide this one over. And now what we've really done is, along with separating this here, is broken these notes into their up and down sort of components, which will give us more control over that vibrato later on. All right, let's look. go back into our edit mode now. Now that we've got this sort of broken into these component pieces, what we can do is highlight all of them, come up here to our uh, pitch macro, the correct pitch macro. And by selecting this, we get a few different options. The first I want to point out is snap to chord scale. I already have that turned on. This will make sure that your notes snap to whatever key or chords you're working with. I've already figured out that this song is in B minor, and that's what I want. I want to kind of adhere to that, at least for now. The second control is drift. And just to talk about drift for a moment, this is basically a freebie inside Melodyne. Uh, drift is the long, slow, changing of tone. And you could almost think about it as sort of a tilt for your pitch right there. And I love this because I feel like you can even out some consistency without losing all of the little variables. So this is a, a feature in Melodyne I think you can use to great extent without really any artifacts. So I'm going to bring this up and down and you can just kind of look at the lines and see how they sort of slightly change in intentionality and in direction. Uh, so that's a great one to work right there. And now I'm going to come to the pitch center and as I move this up, I want you to watch these blobs. You see how they're all kind of moving more into place with the exact melody that we're looking for. 
But check this out right here, right? In this vibrato section, if I move this up, we're gonna be kind of eliminating some of that vibrato, and that's not really what I wanna do right there. So for right now, I'm gonna leave this at 100% and hit OK. And then I'm gonna come back down over here to this vibrato section and highlight just the notes that are in vibrato and open up my pitch macro again and then back off that a little bit right there. And really what I'm looking for, right, is for the bottom of the pitch lines to kind of swing to the bottom of the note and the top to swing to the top of the note. That's at least a starting point. I might constrain it more or less later on, but that's a good starting point. Okay. So now I can hit OK, and I've got this much closer in terms of overall pitch where we want it. Now is a massive tool for increasing the, the consistency right here, which is our transition tool. If you right-click and go to your pitch tool, at the end of any one of these separations, you'll see that gold line, and if you hover over it, you can see your mouse becomes this little cantilevered X. So I'm going to highlight everything except the vibrato section right here, because I don't want to use the transition on that. This transition tool allows us to slow down the motion from one pitch to the next, and that is not something I want for vibrato. But for the rest of these breaks, this is absolutely what I want. So I'll just click on that gold line and straighten it out. And now if we look at our pitch tool right here, you can see that these lines are even more consistent and straightened out. Okay, now that I've gone looking at the whole structure, I'm gonna come in here a little bit at the beginning and take a look at some of these individual words right here. And like this first word right here is a perfect point, right? We see this pitch swing down into that word right there. Let's give that a listen. Okay, she swings down in, and because these are oohs, I really don't want that, right? I want it to hit consistently right there to give it almost like pad-like texture. So I'm gonna to come to my note separation tool and kind of separate that at the beginning just to cut out that swing a little bit right there. And then coming over to my timing tool, right? I can now take this and stretch this out. I'm gonna select this right here and then take this note and just sort of stretch it out a little bit. Let me select this also and just stretch it out to the beginning right there. And now I'm gonna highlight this part at the beginning that I don't want. You can delete it or come to note off right here. And now that I've sort of added on a little bit extra but starting exactly at the note where I want it, now I can come over here to my fade tool and draw in a little bit of a fade right there like so. And then by dragging up on this, I can sort of make that uh, swing up faster, sort of change the shoulder on that fade right there. So now what we get is Nice, right on that note, right from the very beginning right there. Another great way to get a little more consistency in your pitch and in your tone. Now, another place that I really like to do some things, some little changes is with our time handle tool. Now this is a subtle one and you don't wanna to go too far with this, but if you come over here to your time handle tool, you can find a spot like this where this note swings up kind of slowly and you may wanna swing up a little bit faster. So this is a great area where I could double click right here with my time handle tool and just then drag that over just a little bit. And now that note is just gonna swing up a little bit faster. And this makes it a little more intentional as well. How far you wanna push this on an individual vocal is kind of up to you, but this is great for taking multiple vocals and making them match that swing up together right there. Okay, great. Now the one last part that I wanna talk about right here is our modulation tool. Now, the modulation tool is really designed for vibrato type sequences. So normally I wouldn't use it in a vocal like this too much. Since it's designed for vibrato, it works great on that. On other parts of vocals, like what we've got right here, too much of this tool can start to cause some artifacts. So I will use it to even this out a little bit, but I will do it lightly, just a little bit, just to get a little more consistency, just that last five or 10%. Let's pull this down just a little bit right here. You can always see how far you're adjusting it right there. That evens that out nicely. Now, that kind of covers a lot of the pitch portion of this, but now we're gonna to get to the tone. And a big important thing for tone is the formant tool. The formant is the unpitched portion of your vocal, of, of your mouth right there. And so this is a great place to listen for places where when people drop to lower notes, if the note drops to the back of their throat, or if they're straining on a high note, you get a kind of a, distant, a different tone. And this allows you to even it out a little bit. Let's just listen to this. Okay, it's nice, but there is a slightly different tone right there. 
So what I'm going to do is take all these notes that are on E and drag those up to there. And I'm going to take this notes that's on the G sharp, I'm going to select, uh, sorry, on the uh, A and drag those down to there, and I'm gonna take all the notes that are on the G and drag those down as well. And what I've done right here is really even out that formant. Now, a very useful thing that you can do is highlight all of these, like so, right? And move that whole formant up or down to see how it fits within the song. Let's give that a listen. When I woke up this morning I was watching the I like that. By moving that whole formant up a little bit, we've separated this out from the lead vocal a little bit. And I think it sits nicer in the mix right there. Okay, one last thing to show you, which is inside our sound editor. Again, this is only in Melodyne Studio, but there is a section in here at the bottom that is called Contour. And when you're looking at all of these bars right here, these all represent harmonics kind of averaged across the whole song right there. And this contour allows you to smooth those out a little bit. Now, a little bit of this goes a long way, as with all of the tools in the sound editor. However, if you've got someone who changes tone a lot in between places, this can be very nice for evening it out a little bit. So the last thing that I'll do right here as I let this play is just bring this contour down a little bit, bringing it closer to flat. As you see, if I drag this over right here, we can really smooth out all the inconsistencies, but we don't want to go that far. All right, so let's give this a listen. When I woke up this morning I was watching the news, yeah. When I woke up this morning By the way, Option gives you fine control right there, and I like that a little bit, but it has darkened up the vocal ever so slightly. So I'm gonna to come to this contour slider, which is uh, Brilliance. This slider right here is Brilliance, and I'm just gonna bring that up a little bit as we listen. When I woke up this morning, I was watching the news, yeah. Great, I like that. So let's go back in here at the beginning again. Here is our uh, original uh, untuned vocal at all with the compare button. When I woke up this morning, and here is our final. When I woke up this morning, I was watching the news, yeah. Nice, I like that. Just so much more consistent in uh, in intention, in tone, and in pitch. Hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.